Justin Trudeau said there are still Canadian troops on the ground in Afghanistan to help secure the airport. Give us a sense, how many troops, what exactly are they doing to help people get out? Well, uh, I'm going to come to that part of your question. But first, Devin, in light of the images you've shown, I just want to say uh, how gut-wrenching they are and how deeply concerned we are with the situation in Afghanistan. We are working around the clock. I really want to emphasize that uh, for you and your viewers. As you pointed out, we have already evacuated 800 Afghans, 500 of whom have already safely arrived uh, in Canada, thanks to the exemplary performance of our, our CAF members. Um, I also want to point out that we are working very closely uh, with our coalition allies, including the United States, in an effort to try and resume flights. The key to this is to establish security at the airport. So that's phase one. But phase two, and I think it's really important to clarify for you, is the, the broader number which we announced around uh, welcoming 20,000 Afghan refugees will also involve providing a long-term solution for the many thousands of Afghan refugees, including women and girls and human rights activists who've already fled Afghanistan to neighboring countries. And that's work we're going to undertake in conjunction with civil society here. So there's a lot of important work that's being done, and we are going to follow through with our commitment on it. But, but to be fair, how? I mean, uh, I know that the, Mr. Trudeau said there's a, uh, an aircraft that might be waiting in Kuwait, and, and you can answer the question, how many troops are on the ground? But, sir, it's been since April when the U.S. announced it was pulling its troops from Afghanistan. What took uh, the Canadian government until last month to actually announce plans to evacuate Afghan interpreters and their families, many of whom now fear they're going to be killed and executed by the Taliban? We've acted with urgency all along uh, to stage this operation, both in terms of evacuating the Afghan locally engaged staff as well as the interpreters the concrete early results of which we've already reflected in the numbers, and we're hoping to do more there. But before that, Evan, as you know, uh, we stood up special immigration uh, measures 10 years ago to resettle uh, interpreters. I would point out that the current program, uh, we hope, uh, will be able to do more, including resettling uh, family members. Uh, and I would also point out that because of Canada's but leadership in the humanitarian sphere, we continue to resettle Afghan refugees every year. Uh, they file claims, they're adjudicated, and that is how, that is why, I beg your pardon, the United Nations continues to single out Canada for its work when it comes to humanitarian resettlement. That is the value which but underscores sorry, the Sorry, I, I, like, I, to be fair, look, at, I, I don't know if anyone should be patting people on the back. I'm literally getting messages from people. Uh, I talked to an Afghan interpreter who worked with Canadians for three years whose brother was executed by the Taliban three months ago. He fears his whole family is about to be executed. He said he's getting uh, no help. There's got one case where there are 100 people who all have Canadian government approved links to Canada. They're hiding in a house. Uh, they want to get out. So, you know, this is a desperate time for them. Let's get specific, sir. Who is Canada negotiating with to get these people out? Well, you're right. It is a very desperate time, and that's why we are working 24-7, including with our uh, friends south of the border, the Americans, the Brits. As the Prime Minister pointed out, we are in constant contact with them. Uh, my colleagues, Ministers Garneau and Minister Sage, and are working with their counterparts to see what we can do in a joint collaborative effort to continue to evacuate as many Afghans as possible. In addition to that, as you have also seen, and Evan, you've been reporting about some of this, quite rightly, I would point out, that there are tens of thousands, if not more, of innocent Afghans who have already fled to neighboring countries. And what Canada has done is it has stood up a pathway to protection by uh, prioritizing women, girls, human rights activists, targeted religious minorities, all of whom are uh, in the crosshairs of the Taliban, we want to provide them with a home. And in my conversations with uh, the communities here, the, particularly the Afghan-Canadian diaspora, who is gravely concerned, they're prepared to step up. So we will work in conjunction with them to try and provide them with a long-lasting solution. Okay. And as okay. you know, uh, they, can, they have an opportunity I, to give I, back. I, I know, but, but you got ex-Canadian military members, and I've spoken to many of them who are saying they're trying to get their interpreters and their families out. They say they have no communication between the Department of National Defense and forces on the ground. So you can explain that, but I'm going to read you a note I got from a Canadian veteran working to help Afghani families. And he's saying this, 
Uh, I don't buy what the Prime Minister, well, what Justin Trudeau is saying. The U.S. has no capacity to provide security or infrastructure on the ground. This is a note I just got, sir. For any people we send in, if we do send them, we have no way to get them out if things go sideways. There's only a small security force in, in the country. So can you give people any assurance, given the chaos, the Taliban control, how many Canadian troops are on the ground? Will Canada land a plane? And how many of these interpreters and families who are desperate to get out will we get out? I appreciate you reading in real time a note that you got from a veteran. And I also want to express our gratitude to the many vets who are trying to help. And we thank them for providing us with information. I continue to receive notes myself. As you can imagine, Evan, I've been inundated with notes uh, from veterans, uh, from my colleague MPs, from civil society, from members of the academia from Afghans, we are literally doing this around the clock, trying to identify as many Afghans as possible that we can evacuate. I won't get into operational details. I can't think of a more reckless thing to do than to be sharing, uh, you know, in the open exactly what the finer points are of how it is that we plan to evacuate, precisely because of the images that you've shown. What's important is that your viewers know and that Canadians know that our government is doing everything that we can in collaboration with the coalition to try and establish security so that we can resume our evacuation effort. But the other important part of this is that the work will continue even after evacuating is no longer possible, because we know that there is going to be a point in the not too distant future where it just simply because of the withdrawal of the coalition that we will have to look at other pathways. And that's why we continue to emphasize. What, what is another path? I'm just trying to figure this out. Like, like you know, how does, what does that I, look I like? I appreciate what you're saying, but the the, the world the world is. We are hearing reports that the Taliban are knocking on doors and they're going to execute people who work with countries like Canada, the U.S., and our and our allies. You know that their families are going to be killed. This is their worry. It will be too late. The Taliban will kill them. They've done it before. They they. They worry, and I spoke to an interpreter today, they worry they're going to do it again. I, is it too, like, let's be realistic. Did we blow it? Did we not get them out fast enough? The Taliban took over too quickly. And these people, they got no shot of getting them out. Like, is that the reality here? Like, on, or is there an international plan to secure that airport and actually airlift out thousands of people who potentially will be targeted? Our hope continues to be able to, to evacuate as many Afghans as possible uh, out of Kabul in cooperation with our allies. And that is precisely what we are working on uh, right this moment and will continue to for as long as possible. And then we will start the work of resettling Afghan refugees, particularly vulnerable groups who have come under the thumb and the shroud of the Taliban, so that we can provide them with a safe home here in Canada. And we know that we can do that work in conjunction with Canadians. We've seen time and time again, because Canadians know when to do the right thing. And it is the right thing to, 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 to continue to, to make all efforts to help those who have lost their home through no fault of their own. And that is going to continue to be my commitment, our government's commitment going forward.